for their part today. And we'll have them come up right before the end and, and do another song before we dismiss. But um, the reason why they're singing and traveling and doing those things uh, is like they said, we want Jesus to be preached, right? We want Him to be uh, proclaimed so that others can be reached with the glorious gospel. If you have your Bible with you, let's turn to Luke chapter 23. And if you're in the parking lot and you were able to uh, hear them, oh, I'm grateful for that. And if not, now you get to hear me. Sorry about your luck, right? But let's stand, uh, if you're able to, Luke 23, verse number 50. Just read a few verses, let you stretch a little bit before we... Um, uh, go to this uh, part of the Word of God in the service. Luke chapter 23, verse number 50. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. He took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day, according to the commandment. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. It came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. All God's people said, Amen. Let's be seated. We'll bow to pray. Father in heaven, I bow before you in the public presence of those gathered in this place. God, I ask for wisdom. I lack it. I need it. Lord, I pray that you would um, let your word shine forth and hide me behind the cross. Lord, as this pulpit is just a place uh, that we use, but we're asking that you would surely use this place to uh, share the truth of your word through the witness and through the preaching today. Lord, thank you for the music, the singing. Thank you for all the servants around the building helping out and doing a part today and for no other reason but to glorify you and that hopefully from this day that some, someone's eternity would be changed. God, I can't do that, and so I ask for your spirit uh, to um, be free, to um, draw people unto your side, that they can make a decision to call upon your name. And now we're tasked with lifting up Jesus and uh, promoting him, proclaiming him, preaching him, uh, but then we trust that uh, your uh, work would be done. In Christ's name we ask these things. Amen. <clears throat> what a day this is to be a Christian. It's a great day to be a Christian. This is the day of all days, and we come to celebrate the resurrection on any Sunday as we rejoice over what Jesus has done for us. But this day is just a little extra special. I pulled the first weed out of the flower bed in church this morning. Amen. Spring is on its way. I love it. Uh, it it's just a, a time of new life. Our sister Doris is a Never misses a service, and of course, through this last year and all these uh, uh, differences of, of things going on, she got to come to church this morning. I said, Doris, you resurrected. You're here. It's Resurrection Sunday, and she was so glad to see the little ones in the early service and <clears throat> been a part of our church since the very beginning. Oh my goodness, it's a great day to be a Christian. You see, there's a few uh, verses that we read that talks about the day. There was the preparation day, there was a Sabbath day, and then there was the first day of the week. The reason why it's such a great day to be a Christian, first of all, it's because uh, that the whole world is taking notice of what goes on today. If you didn't uh, recognize that, that's on the news, it's around the world. Churches are meeting and, and calling upon Jesus, and some are in a more serious situation than others. 
as far as restrictions and restraints. Our, uh, one of our missionaries, Brother John Walls, trying to uh, finish up uh, buying their first building for one of their churches that they've been able to train young men to start in Taiwan. Um, but he was originally in China, and about, I'd say, six years ago, he was arrested on an Easter Sunday morning in China for holding church services, extradited, <clears throat> flown out of the country, told never to come back again. So he already spoke the language, so he just went to Taiwan instead. Amen. And uh, he's been uh, leading people to the Lord. Now his uh, nephew, uh, or, or cousin, uh, uh, Adam Walls, is there with him, and they're planting churches and training young men. You can follow him along some social media. But uh, what a great day. Even the world it might not believe or might not want to receive, they still have to take notice that something's going on. We've been on this uh, back corner of Oak and 9th Street for almost 13 years now, but we're moving out to higher ground here in a couple weeks. Amen. And uh, we'll get to have a sign, and you won't be able to hide from Bible Baptist Church in a few more weeks. They might not all come, but they're going to see us out there, bold and uh, brash and, and, and trying to uh, tell people that they need to go to heaven. Might not everyone want to hear it, but they're going to see it. Amen. This day is a great day to be a Christian because the whole world takes notice about the resurrection. Second of all, it's a great day because we have a triumphant Savior who conquered death, hell, and the grave. He did die. He was buried. But now, praise God, He rose again and is still alive today at the right hand of the Father. It's a great day because we have a triumphant Savior. Brother Mike Black said yesterday he was listening to a preacher and the preacher said, any other religion could keep going without their head being alive. But Christianity would have died had it not been for Jesus coming back alive. His whole promise of his ministry and prophecy was that he would rise from the dead. If, he did, if he's not alive, Christianity would have ended because there's no reason to serve a dead, uh, a failed Savior as Jesus was not. He rose and is alive forevermore. It's a great day to be a Christian because the world takes notice, a triumphant Savior. How about this? <clears throat> we have a true Savior. Look at Luke 24. Look down to um, uh, verse number 6. It says, He is not here but is risen. Remember how He spake unto you when He was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day, what's it say? Every element of that verse is supernaturally inspired by prophecy of Jesus Christ. Do you realize he fell into the hands of the Sanhedrin? If they'd had their way, they'd have stoned him. They would not have crucified him. They'd have taken him out and they'd have killed him the good old Hebrew way. They'd have rocked him with stones. Then the third day. It's not just that he'd rise someday. No, he specified which day he would rise again. And it was uh, as he was crucified three days gone by and then he rose from the dead. We have a true Savior. It's a great day to be a Christian because we're following something that's true. Wouldn't you like to know the truth? I would love to know the truth about all kinds of things. I have four kids. I would love to know the truth about a lot of things. Sometimes when we go for a little while, we come back and we would love to know the truth about what's happened, what's going on. Just teasing there, but it is. We have a true Savior. The only real truth that I know in this world is Jesus and His Word. Sometimes I can trust other things, but sometimes I can't. Christ's Word always has, always will, and will prove out to be true. Then we have a trusted Savior. In the book of Acts chapter 1, you don't have to turn there, but when He ascended on high... There were two men standing white peril that also said, Why stand ye gazing, looking up into heaven? This same Jesus who's taken from you in so like manner shall so come again and return unto you. He's coming back to the same mount, the Mount of Olives. It wasn't a, a mistake where he ascended because Zacharias says that's where he's going to land. He's going to split the Mount of Olives in half. And if you didn't know this, the Mount of Olives is on the east side of Jerusalem. And the east side of Jerusalem is the one that has all the contention and all the fighting and all the unrest of an occupied city and territory. Did you know that's the side of Jerusalem that the Bible says Jesus will come fight the battle of Armageddon on the east side? So if you're from the west side of your town, you're from the good side. Amen. I'm just, no, I'm just teasing here. But it's true. <clears throat> Specifically, 
we have a trusted Savior that has told us where He's coming and He gave us some signs of when He's coming, even though we don't know the day nor the hour. It's a great day to be a Christian. I would rather be nothing other than a Christian in this day. This day is a day of challenge and of trial and of uh, question and all kinds of unrest and uncertainty. But do you know that we are closer than any other generation to experiencing the return of Christ? And I am glad and excited to be a Christian this day. This is the day the Lord hath made. I'll be glad and rejoice in it. And especially that I know that I am saved and I've been, I've been born again. It's a great day to be a Christian. As you look at this passage, verse number 54 says this. Joseph of Arimathea, he begged the body to take it down in verse 54, or I'm sorry, in verse 53, laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid. It didn't matter. It wasn't going to be crowded very long because he wasn't staying in there very long. Verse 54, I love that song. My friend uh, Matt Rankin sings, Joseph got his tomb back, right? Uh, he, he didn't have to leave it, uh, uh, rent it out very long, just a couple days. Verse 54 says, And that day was the preparation. The day of preparation. <clears throat> In that culture of the Hebrew world, they would prepare to get things ready so the Sabbath day they could rest from all of the work that they uh, could put off uh, that did not need to be done that day. And so this day was a day of preparation. Then you see in verse 56, the ladies were getting the spices ready and they rested the Sabbath day. Oh, the day that was past and the day that was rest, but then there's going to come a day, the first day of the week, when he rose from the dead. I want you to see that just in our life, the preparation of the Gospels in the past, Jesus has come, he already lived it, he already uh, fulfilled the law, and the preparation for you to have a key to heaven has already been made. Then there's a day of rest. If you've got Jesus, we rest from our works and labors. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Rest for your soul. I have plenty to do, but I have plenty that I don't have to do when it comes to my faith and trust with Jesus Christ. I've, had, I've got things I'd like to accomplish in this world and in this life. But I'm not trying to accomplish my uh, entrance into heaven. That's been guaranteed and bought for me by the blood and by the righteousness of Christ. And so you see that this first day of the week, now verse 1 of 24 says, the first day of the week, he's already exited the uh, sepulcher. He rose again from the dead. Oh, it's a great day to be a Christian because we have the resurrection. The world may have things that, that get them excited. And uh, boy, I, I watched uh, the highlights of that ball game last night. What a shot, man. Oh, what a shot at the end of that basketball game and uh, uh, the instant classic and all those things. And there's things that we can get excited about, but that, that ball game ain't going to last for eternity. In fact, it'll be forgotten in a few years and uh, everything will be uh, something new. But this day of resurrection, we have been rejoicing and been excited about it for almost 2,000 years. Did you just get that? Can you imagine? Hey, let's get together and rejoice about a ball game that happened 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Who played it? We don't even remember. But it's a good shot. That's not going to happen. It's forgotten. I mean, no one remembers. It's, it's gone out of the mind, but we rejoice it's a good day to be a Christian because what we're celebrating is still worth celebrating today. You know, when there's um, someone that passes on, the Bible says we sorrow not as those which have no hope because it's a good day to be a Christian when one of your loved ones pass on. We know where they've gone if they're saved. It's a, it's a great day to be a Christian. This day that we come together to rejoice and, and uh uh, celebrate the resurrection of Christ, it's a great day. And I uh, want to make sure that I could do my part to share the joy and the excitement of what Christ has done in me. Sometimes I'm not a good advertisement. I'm like a false advertisement. I don't have a big enough smile on my face and a big enough twinkle in my eye to share what Jesus has already done for me. I need to borrow a little bit from Will every once in a while, amen, and get that, uh, get that extra shot of, uh, of excitement. He just drinks more coffee than I do. That's what it is. Uh, don't let him fool you. There's some other days that are just as important and just as good in Scripture. Can I show you a couple of days 
that I want you to be excited. It's a great day to be a Christian. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. There's another great day that I want to make sure that we know about. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 1. We then as workers together with Him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For He saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the what? Day of salvation. Day of salvation. It's a great day, the day you got saved. Hey, if you just got saved recently, it's a great day. It's a wonderful day when you called on the Lord and got it settled. That verse 1 says, I hope you don't, you don't get the grace of God in vain. What that means is you're hearing about it. You need to do something about it the day you hear about it. Receive the Lord as your Savior. Don't be like Scott Geyer and take months and months before you get saved. Amen, Brother Scott? He told us he listened to it a lot, a long time before he accepted Christ. No, today is a great day if it's the day that you get saved. Oh, you'll never regret being born again. You'll never want to uh, trade it back in once you get Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I remember when I made sure I was saved. And uh, Pastor Smith, after church on a Wednesday night, uh, shared with me. I asked him, I tugged on his, his suit, and I said, hey, I need to talk to you. And uh, I wasn't confident that I really had gotten saved. and want to make sure I prayed again, asked the Lord to come in. And I can tell you that ever since that day, I can always point back. I can take you back to a place, draw you a circle where I know that I called on the Lord to save my soul. It's a great day, the day that you get saved. If you're here this morning and you've not had that day, you know it and God knows it too. It's not my job to point it out to you. It's just my job to preach it to you so you can get it straight and get it settled. And you can have a new birth date that you've been born again, accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. All the change that comes in when you get the one who's made to come in, Jesus Christ. It's a great resurrection day. It's a great day, the day of salvation. And if you'll keep turning your Bible, go to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. There's another great day. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also, verse 1, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Mm -hmm, I got a few of those in my house. Amen. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. That word incontinent means they cannot, take, they cannot keep their own sensual desires in, in check. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Have you ever heard someone say, well, I'm spiritual, just not in the way that you are? That, that's said a lot of times. Well, I believe just not the way you think we should. Well, friend, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have the power behind any belief. And you can believe in something, but that doesn't make it true just because you believe in it. I believe the Bengals are going to win for a long time. It ain't ever happened, okay? I'm telling you, I've been believe I'm a believer, but it ain't happened because it's not true. You can believe. That doesn't accomplish unless it has the power connected to it. They've got microphones that are, that are uh, uh, able to uh, take in sound and amplify, but if it's not plugged in, it ain't going anywhere. Something's got to have some power to get through it. The power is the Lord Jesus Christ. It says they'll deny the power thereof. Skip on down and look at verse number 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, Iconium, Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord deliver me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer what? 
There are perilous days that are promised for those of the faith. I don't know if we've already lived through some of them. Remember, this book is not an American book. This book was translated into English before our country ever was formed. This book was already translated. This is a world book for God so loved the world. And Christians worldwide have faced persecution. There was uh, Christians arrested or, or stopped from having service Friday in the country of England. There's all over there's places that are restricting and trying to confiscate and to remove the preaching of the Bible. Churches in Canada, preachers are being arrested. One of our uh, new missionaries that we're going to be hopefully supporting later this year, he's planning to go there. I'm like, if you want a jail ministry, we can get you one in Mechanicsburg. You don't have to go that far. But he said, I'm called. I'm going to go. I know God wants me to go there. And, and uh, listen, uh, there, there's persecution promised in the last days. But look in Luke chapter 6. Let me show you something about that day. Oh, if that happens to us, and if that's happening to others who are blood-bought, born again, children of God, Luke chapter 6 tells us about a day. It's a great day. Luke chapter 6, if you want to turn with me and have a little more time to do that in the late service, uh, Luke 6, look at verse number 22. It's a great day to be a Christian. The day that He rose from the dead, the day that we got saved. And then look at this, Luke 6, 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil. For why? For the Son of Man's sake. Now, some of us are hated just because we're hateful. Some of us are rejected because we're rejectable. Some of us suffer some persecution because we're just downright foolish and ornery and we need to have some, we, we weep what we sow. Amen? Don't think you're a great Christian because people hate you if you're just ornery. They don't like you not because you're Christian, because you're annoying. That's why. Don't, don't pat yourself on the back. It's, it's because you're being hard to get along with. But if there is a call for you to suffer approach because you're kind, because you're giving, because you're loving, because you're following Christ. Look at verse 23. The Bible says, Rejoice in that day. Oh, it's a great day if that ever happens. And leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Oh, be careful. <clears throat> I, I would rather have eternal riches than temporary ones that will fade away. Amen. Listen, friend, it's a great day if you are called and get to suffer for being a Christian. Praise His name. Don't get discouraged. Don't get disenchanted. Or don't get uh, distracted and want to give up. No. You praise the Lord. And man, when the apostles were beaten for the name of Christ, they were like, yes, we got to have suffer something for Christ. Kick off the dust. Let's go to the next town. Let the Lord use us in however He sees fit. It's a great day to be a Christian. It's a great day if we get to suffer something for His name. Thirdly, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Some of you might say, Preacher, I'm here on a Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. I know Jesus resurrected. Duh, that's why I'm here. I'm rejoicing that I've been saved. And give me something else I can work on or feed on or, or contemplate on. Oh, just ask for it, sister. Okay, you just uh, beg for it, brother. Here it comes. If you are already blood-bought, you know you're going to heaven, thank the Lord, this point's for you, okay? Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 4. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. If you are saved, God describes you as a child of light. One that's got his eyes open and knows what's going on around. One that's looking for the return of Christ and not wandering around uh, unexpectedly, unexpectedly uh, 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 for it, unexpecting it to happen. I couldn't get my words right there. Verse number seven says, or verse number six says, Therefore, 
Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be what? For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be what? All twice it says that. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. I don't care what's legalized, what's offered, what's authorized by commercials on every sporting event. God tells you if you're saved, you ought to be sober. That's what the Word of God says. Don't argue with me about something that is so clearly put in here, sober-minded. Hey, if you move to New York and they legalize marijuana, they want you to smoke it on the streets, I don't blame New York governor for wanting to happen because he wants his people high so they don't know what he's doing. How else could you wander around as a citizen of that place? It don't matter what anyone says. The Word of God has said, be sober-minded. Make sure, Christian, because you're not of the night, you're of the day, God's design for you is to be clear-minded so He can fill you with His Spirit and His Word and you can do His work while you're still here. You don't need to escape from reality. God wants that reality and wants to use you through that reality. And if you have some trial or tribulation, God wants to be your comfort so you can comfort others with that same hope. I've never met an addict or someone who's uh, under the influence of alcohol that says, hey, I want to help my kids with the same thing that I've got. I've never met somebody that's a drunk that says, I hope my kid gets overtaken by alcohol the way I am. I've never met someone who's a, that's a, a, got a substance problem that says, man, I can't wait to teach my kids how to do this just like I am. I've not met that person. You know what I've met people that say? My kids don't know I'm doing this. I hope that they won't do it and fall in the same trap that I do. Christ wants you to be comforted by Him so you can give someone else that same comfort that you've received and that same true escape from what the world is suffering with that God has made you free and you should be free indeed. Pharmakeos is in the Bible. It's one of the last things that people will not repent of in the book of Revelation. Pharmakeos is called sorcery in our New, in our New Testament translation. Make no mistake about it. One of the end time uh, plagues of humanity will be drugs and things that take away your sobriety and we are living in it and it's being lived up but it won't take you up the word of God says be sober let me show you something else it says be committed to being sober that's a great day when you can have your sobriety and when you can be clear-minded so God can use you to your fullest second of all continue in the faith look at verse 8 but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Continue in faith. Don't be uh, um, <clears throat> ashamed of it. Don't be hiding from it. Don't be a secret undercover uh, uh, agent for the Lord Jesus Christ. God doesn't need no 007 uh, uh, spies for him. God needs you to be a, putting on a breastplate and to have a shield that has his uh, uh, emblem on it. He wants you to be out front and so others can know what you are identifying with as a follower of Christ. Be committed to sobriety. Be continuing in your faith. Look at verse 9. Consider your future. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's a great day because we have something to look forward to as a Christian. I'm not lo looking to take my last breath. I'm longing to take my first breath in heaven. I I'm looking for the finish line, not so I can accomplish something on earth. No, so I can go ahead and take my spot where he's got prepared for me for eternity. Christian, we have a future that is different from everyone else in the world. It is settled. It's secured. It has already been uh, 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 prepared and made by the Lord Jesus himself. And we ought to consider our future on this great day, that we are called children of the day and not children of the night. Finally, look at verse 11. It says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. We ought to comfort our family and our friends with this day. The Bible says that we don't sorrow as those which have no hope. And every chance that I uh, am called upon to do a funeral or a graveside service, I, I usually at some point will say something like this. I'll say this. If I didn't believe what I was telling you, I would be the furthest from a cemetery and from a funeral home 
of any other place on a day like this. But because I completely believe that there's a heaven and there is an existence for those that have left the body and present with the Lord, I will gladly come to any family gathering that invites me so I can share the good news and comfort with these words of eternal life. Amen. That's it. If I didn't believe it, I would run from those places. But because I believe it, I'll be happy to be at those places. We had to comfort our family on a day, and what a great day it is when you realize that you're a child, child or children of light. Fourthly, go to, and finally, that gets you excited, okay? Finally, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Oh, it's a great day to be a Christian. <clears throat> I was excited to wake up. I was anticipating uh, Brother Ted's new uh, breakfast creation. And if you missed it, it, it needs to make a reappearance, okay? That, that uh, hash brown casserole, I don't know what was in it, but it was good. And I, I gladly tasted it before everyone came just to make sure no one was going to get sick and no one was going to get hurt by it. I, I, you know, I bore the cross and I just uh, taste tested everything before everybody came just to make sure it was good for you. Amen. And uh, anyway, I've been excited all day and I'll be excited later on. This is the day the Lord hath made. I want to rejoice in all every minute of it. But 2 Peter chapter 2, look at verse number 9. There's one more great day that it will be a great day to be a Christian on. The Bible says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 says, But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, whatever you call it, it's a great day to be a Christian. But on Judgment Day, when the wrath of God is revealed upon all that have offended and have broken God's laws, it'll be a great day to be a Christian on that day. It'll be a great day. There might be some rough days to be a Christian. When you're disappointed, when there's something you prayed for that didn't get answered exactly as you wished, when there's tragedy and trouble, there's some tough days to be a Christian. I'm not going to sugarcoat that and, 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 and just not be a realist. There are some tough days when you're called to, to take part in something that you're not uh, especially looking forward to. But on the day of judgment will be a great day to be a Christian. The wrath of God will be revealed unto all humanity, and rightfully so, because we were given perfection and we passed it up with choosing sin instead. And it's not just Adam and Eve, but the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. On the day of judgment, when God's wrath is revealed, He'll pass over the judgment that I deserve because of what His Son Jesus Christ did on the cross and then proved when He rose from the dead. Listen. The very first time that that word Passover was put into use was the story of the origination of the nation of Israel. The Hebrews had been in Egypt for hundreds of years. And as they had uh, lost favor and the Egyptian Pharaoh had now uh, reverted to uh, uh, killing their children and trying to uh, do genocide by uh, forcing them to be uh, intermingled with the Egyptians, Moses was called and God gave him commands and he gave his, uh, his, uh, um, uh, his list of what needed to happen and Egypt would not give in and so there were plagues, there were consequences and the final plague was what they call the Passover. And the Lord said, get your house ready, every house take a lamb, kill that lamb and put the blood on the doorpost and on the side post of every house because that night the destroyer would come through and any house that did not have the blood over the doorpost, the firstborn would be slain inside that house. <clears throat> Anyone could have taken uh, the heed. Anyone could have taken the warning. It wasn't just for the Jews or the Hebrews. It, anyone could have. 
But the Bible says that night that Pharaoh lost his firstborn. And there might have been some Jews and Hebrews that lost their firstborn. But I know this, the ones that placed the blood where God had purposed and planned, the Bible says he passed over them. Judgment was averted and avoided by the blood of a lamb. Friend, on Judgment Day, we just read, God knows how to deliver the just and to reserve the unjust for the day of judgment. It'll be a great day if God can pass over you because of Jesus in your life on the day of judgment. I hope that you've got that settled. If you haven't yet, it could be a great day today. This could be the day of salvation if you'll harden not your heart. I'm sure that since you're in uh, Union County, Marysville, Ohio, you've probably heard about Jesus a time or two before this day. But if you've never called upon Him as your Savior, you need to hear about Him another time on this day. It'll be a great day of judgment if He can pass over you by the blood of Jesus Christ. All be sober. Hey, rejoice if there's a day of suffering. Hey, it's a great day, if nothing else, just to remember and to uh, 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 rekindle those thoughts of that first resurrection day when Jesus was not found in the grave. Why seek you the living among the dead? He's not here, he's risen. But guest, friend, family, I don't care if you've been here a thousand times or this is your first time. If you need to get Jesus, I hope you'll come. I hope you'll let us share from the Bible. Somebody will take it and show you what it means to be saved. Somebody will come with you if you're sitting by them, or if you're a little nervous, stay after, and we can share and talk with you and and open the Scriptures so you can know it for sure. But it'd be a great day. It'd be a great day to become a Christian on this day. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for the time we get to share in your house. And I pray that you'd bless what was said. Lord, that uh, you would call people to your side. We're longing to meet you, and it's a great day, but it'll be a great day as well when you come to get us and receive you unto ourselves. The Bible calls it the day of the Lord. In the Old Testament, the prophetic events that bring in the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, friend, if you're here this morning, you know without a doubt, there's no uh, uh, question in your mind that you have been saved and you're on your way to heaven. Would you raise your hand as a testimony to God? Let Him see it. And don't be ashamed. Praise the Lord. You can put it down. No one's looking around. My eyes are open. I am. I'm peeking right now. I won't call you out, but I sure would like to pray for you and plead with you. If you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. I don't know I'm going to heaven. If I died or if the Lord returned, I'm not confident what would happen to me. Are you like that today? Would you raise your hand? Would you catch my eye? Preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure I've got that settled. Oh, if you're like that, You can get it settled today if you'd call on the Lord. Confess Him with your mouth. Believe Him with your heart. The Bible says you shall be saved. Let me tell you about Jesus and what He's done. As the song they sang, oh, friend, you need Him today. As the piano begins to play, in a moment we'll stand to attention and we'll sing a hymn. 488, Just As I Am, is the song. God will take you as you are. He'll remove your sin free of charge because he already paid the price won't you come hey if you've struggled with some of those things we talked about won't you be committed to it let Christ be your reason to have a clear mind and a clear conscience regarding this day father I've done what I can do I've preached I've tried to prepare and Lord I want to proclaim the name of Christ above any other thing God, now I just ask that you'd have your will in your way as we meet together. Father, bless the invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as